my warm greetings and utmost felicitations to all the members and associates of Gamma Philippines for the successful occasion of the 26th Gamma Annual Convention. I would like to acknowledge as well the Gamma, the Gamma boards, Board Officers and Staffs with special citation to our dear friend and colleague in the industry, Gamma Philippines President Ms. Susan R. Lee. Many thanks for this opportunity you have given me to participate in this year's convention. Gamma has always been close to my heart as one of the foremost industry organizations dedicated in providing activities that will provide learning and development among our agents and industry practitioners. And so it is always my pleasure and honor to take part in this yearly event. Despite the hardships and challenges brought by the current pandemic, I am thrilled that we in the insurance industry have managed to surpass these hard times. In the previous year, we have seen extensive efforts both from the part of the industry players and regulator in taking appropriate measures in order to cope with the challenges caused by the outbreak and to ensure business continuity amid the economic disruption. Given the pandemic's impact on employment, business activity, and social mobility, the industry had faced challenges in growth and profitability. But as these restrictions ease and the economic activities gradually resume, I am glad to pronounce that the insurance industry is able to bounce back as well. By the end of the year 2020, the insurance industry's performance had gradually improved as reflected by various indicators and statistics. This fuels our faith and optimism that the insurance industry will be able to thrive and flourish despite the current predicaments of our time. The year-end statistical report for 2020 has shown an increase in the total premium of the industry. As the year closes, the industry recorded a 308 billion pesos of total premium, reflecting a 1.18% increase against the recorded figure in the same period of 2019. More so, the premium income of life insurance sector has inched up by 5.9%. It is worthy to take note that the quarantine protocols and restrictions began to relax by the end of the second quarter of 2020, which could have been affected the policyholders' ability to pay their premiums or renew their policies. With regards to the effects of the pandemic, we can infer that the mobility restrictions somehow helped the middle-class sector to save money. This has, this has allowed the people to buy or renew insurance policies as more of our countrymen are now realizing the importance of life insurance coverage given the, the scores of health and mortality related issues spawned by the pandemic. However, the written premiums from the life non-life sector decreased by 16.71%. The decline could be attributed to the fact that the public is currently more concerned in securing their lives and health than their properties. It could, it could also be inferred that the loss of jobs and source of income due to lockdowns 
could have affected their ability to continue the payment of their policies. We have also seen a 3.88% decrease in the total net worth of the industry as of the year end 2020 compared to the recorded figure of the same period in 2019. The net worth of the life insurance sector decreased by 11.53%. In contrast, the net worth of the non-life sector increased by 7.66%. This increase in the net worth of the non-life sector could be attributed to the increased capitalization and minimum net worth requirement which our local, local insurers must comply with. On the other hand, the total investments of the industry has hit 1.7 trillion pesos, climbing up by 6.97% from 1.59 trillion pesos in 2019. The total paid up capital and guarantee funds of the industry also rose by 9.5%, reaching an amount of 68.19 billion pesos by the year end 2020 from the recorded 59.54 billion pesos in the same period in 2019. Looking into these numbers, we can infer that the insurance industry has been faring well so far despite the challenges posed by the current pandemic. The insurance industry had experienced setbacks at the beginning of the year, but it managed to recover and get back on track as we close the year 2020. Such growth is evident by the year-on-year -year increase in the insurance penetration. As of the year end 2020, the insurance penetration has reached 1.71% a significant increase from the recorded 1.64% penetration rate in the same period of the preceding year. Amid the current challenges, we in the Insurance Commission serve our purpose in moving towards the improvement of our service to our regulated entities. As of this date, we still opt for the offline, online submissions of reportorial requirements and technology-assisted transactions in order to minimize the exposure and prevent the possible contagion of the, vi of the virus. To ensure business continuity in our industry, despite the social restrictions, the Commission had earlier allowed the remote selling of insurance products through the use of ICT and other technologies that support remote communication. Recognizing the significant benefits derived from this, the Commission, through Circular Letter 2020-109, decided to institutionalize the remote selling initiatives as a permanent mode of selling insurance products even after the COVID-19 pandemic. The insurers must of course adhere to the set of guidelines and standards provided by the said circular in order for them to continue the remote or online selling of their products. Such initiative will, will allow our industry and business operations to move forward while maintaining our people's exposure to a bare minimum. This move will also help protect the safety of the public as well as that of our agents and industry practitioners in the field. On the same note, the Insurance Commission also recognizes the important role of our insurance agents in keeping our industry alive. This prompted the Commission to issue Circular Letter 2020-69, which granted temporary license to the qualifying agents who were unable to take the examination. With the restructuring of the agent's computerized examinations and the issuance of necessary rules and regulations in the conduct of such, the validity of the temporary licenses granted to new agents was shortened until November 15, 2020. 
Earlier this year, we have issued Circular Letter 2021-15, which sets the terms and conditions governing the conduct of online agents' computerized examinations. It's still part of our measures to cope up with the challenges of our current time. The Insurance Commission has opted to develop and adopt the Insurance Commission Financial Crisis Management and Resolution Handbook. The handbook was developed on the basis of the framework formulated by the FSCC and adopted its three basic tenets, tenets of crisis management which involves monitoring and surveillance, mitigation, and resolution. With this handbook, we can more be prepared in handling and facing the challenges if another financial crisis ever arises in the future. Generally, we maintain a positive outlook about business recovery for 2021 as we expect an increase in the demand for insurance and protection products backed up by long-term growth prospects and positive regulatory developments. As we make it to the mid-year of 2021, we continue to strive in upholding the industry's resilience while keeping our efforts towards recovery and further development despite the challenging economic conditions. As we continue to push forward, I sincerely hope that Gamma Philippines will remain by our side as one of our staunch allies in promoting a financially inclusive society for all Filipinos. I hope that your activities for this day would serve as a platform for further development among our industry professionals and practitioners. Together, let us forge our path towards a brighter future. Thank you and more power to Gamma Philippines.